the great mauryan emperor ashoka ruled from patliputra but three of his rock edicts ended up in delhi many hundred miles from patliputra and a place which was not even a great political center at the time how did this happen hi i'm swapna little and i'm going to talk about emperor ashoka's edicts which are in delhi Delhi is the only place which has not one, not two, but actually three Ashokan inscriptions. Two are on pillars and one on a large rock. Ashoka, the Mauryan emperor who ruled over a large empire in the 3rd century BCE, is best known to us today through his many inscriptions or edicts, where he set out his personal history, his conquests as a ruler, his conversion to Buddhism, and his ideas about how a king should rule. in which he mostly tried to follow his buddhist convictions he had these edicts inscribed on large boulders and on massive stone pillars through the length and breadth of his vast empire they can be found as far north as afghanistan and as far south as andhra ashoka's edicts were placed in prominent places where it was hoped that a lot of people would see them and this is how a rock inscription came to be placed in delhi which in Ashoka's time was on an important trade route the Uttar Path this route connected eastern india to the northwestern regions ultimately linking up to the central asian silk route the many travelers who used this highway would have read what the king had to say written on this huge rock in the brahmi script so now we come to the two pillars the funny thing is that these were not originally in delhi at all one of them was in a place called topra in haryana and the other in merat and both of these would have been either just off the uttar path or on uh, supplementary routes which led out from this uh, particular highway and these two pillars were seen by feroz shah tughlaq the emperor who ruled from delhi in the second half of the 14th century he was very intrigued by these pillars he called some learned pandits to read the inscriptions but in this they actually failed because by this time the brahmi script had been forgotten though the pandits did not have any answers they felt bad uh, just saying a plain no so they actually told feroz shah that this was the staff or cane of bhim the legendary hero of ancient times uh, and their uh, you know they were replicating a myth that was locally known about this staff nevertheless feroz shah decided to carry these pillars back to delhi and install them there Feroz Shah's chroniclers tell us in great detail and with beautiful illustrations how the pillar at Topra was gently lowered on a bed of semal or silk cotton and then wrapped in reeds and hides and secured with rope. This was then loaded on a long cart and dragged to the bank of the river Yamuna where it was transferred to a boat and thus by river it came to Delhi to the citadel of Feroz Shah which we now call Feroz Shah Kotla. Here it was set up in a special building that was constructed to display it to good effect. The other pillar which came from Merat was set up near the emperor's hunting lodge on a hill which we refer to these days as the ridge. In the early part of the 18th century there was an accidental explosion in some gunpowder that had been stored nearby and the pillar fell down and was broken into several pieces. You can see where these have been later joined together when you see the pillar. <music> 